Number one, put God first. Put God first in everything you do. Everything that you think you see in me, everything that I've accomplished, everything that you think I have, and I have a few things, everything that I have is by the grace of God. Understand that. It's a gift. 40 years ago, March 27th, 1975, it was 40 years ago, uh, just this past March, I was flunking out of college. I had a 1.7 grade point average. I hope none of you can relate. <laughs> I had a 1.7 grade point average. I was sitting in my mother's beauty shop. They still call it beauty shop now? What do they call it now? Yeah, I was sitting in the beauty parlor. I was sitting in my mother's beauty parlor and I'm looking in the mirror and I see behind me this woman under the dryer. And every time she looked up, she every time I looked up, she was looking at me, just looking me in the eye. And I didn't know who she was and I said, you know, she said, somebody give me a pen, give me a pencil. I have a prophecy. March 27, 1975, she said, boy, you are gonna travel the world and speak to millions of people. Now mind you, I flunked out of college. I'm thinking about joining the army. I didn't know what I was gonna do and she's telling me I'm gonna travel the world and speak to millions of people. Well, I have traveled the world and I have spoke to millions of people. But that's not the most important thing, the success that I had. The most important thing is that what she taught me and what she told me that day has stayed with me since. I've been protected. I've been directed. I've been corrected. I've kept God in my life and has kept me humble. I didn't always stick with him, but he always stuck with me. So stick with him in everything you do. If you think you want to do what you think I've done, then do what I've done and stick with God. Number two, fail big. That's right, fail big. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life and it can be, it's, it can be very frightening. It, it's a new world out there, it's a mean world out there and you only live once. So do what you feel passionate about, passionate about. Take chances professionally. Don't be afraid to fail. There's an old IQ test was nine dots and you had to draw five lines with a pencil within these nine dots without lifting the pencil. The only way to do it was to go outside the box. So don't be afraid to go outside the box. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to fail big, to dream big, but remember, Dreams without goals are just dreams and they ultimately fuel disappointment. So have dreams, but have goals, life goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, daily goals. I try to give myself a goal every day. Sometimes just to not curse somebody out. <laughs> Simple goals, but have goals. And understand that to achieve these goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. In order to achieve your goals, you must apply discipline, which you have already done, and consistency every day, not just on Tuesday and miss a few days. You have to work at it every day. You have to plan every day. You've heard the saying, we don't plan to fail, we fail to plan. Hard work works. Working really hard is what successful people do. And in this text, tweet, twerk world that you've grown up in, <laughs> remember, just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Remember that, just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Don't confuse movement with progress. My mother told me, she said, yeah, because you can run in place all the time and never get anywhere. 
So continue to strive, continue to have goals, continue to progress. Number three, you'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. I'll say it again. You'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. I don't care how much money you make, you can't take it with you. The Egyptians tried it. They got robbed. That's all they got. You can't take it with you, with you. And it's not how much you have. It's what you do with what you have. We all have different talents. Some of you will be doctors, some lawyers, some scientists, some educators, some nurses, some teachers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> some preachers. The most selfish thing you can do in this world is help someone else. Why is it selfish? Because the gratification, the goodness that comes to you, the good feeling, the good feeling that I get from helping others, nothing's better than that. Well, one or two things, but nothing's better than that. Not, not jewelry, not big house I have, not the cars, but the, the, it's the joy. That's where the joy is in helping others. That's where the success is in helping others. Finally, I pray that you put your slippers way under the bed tonight so that when you wake up in the morning you have to get on your knees to reach them. And while, you, when, while you're down there, say thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for parents. Thank you for love. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for humility. Thank you for peace. Thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. That's how I live my life. That's where I, why I am, one of the reasons why I am today. Say thank you in advance for what is already yours. True desire in the heart for anything good is God's proof to you sent beforehand to indicate that it's yours already. I'll say it again. True desire in the heart, that itch that you have, whatever it is you want to do, that thing that you want to do to help others and to, to grow and to make money, that desire, that itch, that's God's proof to you sent beforehand already to indicate that it's yours. And anything you want good, you can have. So claim it. Work hard to get it. When you get it, reach back. Pull someone else up. Each one, teach one. Don't just aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference. Every failed experiment is one step closer to success. You've got to take risks, and I'm sure you've probably heard that before, but I want to talk to you about why that's so important. I got three reasons, and then you can pick up your iPhones. First, you will fail at some point in your life, accept it. You will lose. You will embarrass yourself. You will suck at something. There's no doubt about it. And I know that's probably not a traditional message for a graduation ceremony, but hey, I'm telling you, embrace it because it's inevitable. And I should know. In the acting business, you fail all the time. Early on in my career, I auditioned for a part in a Broadway musical. Perfect role for me, I thought, except for the fact that I can't sing. So I'm, I'm in the wings, I'm about to go on stage, but the guy in front of me, he's singing like, like, like Pavarotti. He's just, and he's just going on and on and on. And I'm just shrinking, I'm getting smaller and smaller. So they say, oh, thank you very much, thank you very much, and you'll be hearing from us. So I come out with my little sheet music, and it, it was, it was uh, just my imagination by The Temptations. That's what I came up with. So 
I hand it to the, 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 the accompanist and uh, she looks at it and looks at me and looks out at the director and is like, nice. So I, I start, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to sing. I'm like, it's just my imagination. Once again, and then coming away with me. And I'm not saying anything, so I'm thinking I'm getting better. So I, I could start getting into it. It was just my imagination. <laughs> Running. This, oh, yeah, uh, th yeah th thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Washington. Thank you. So I assumed I didn't get the job. But the next part of the audition, he called me back. The next part of the audition is the acting part of the audition. So I'm like, hey, okay, maybe I can't sing, but I know I can act. So they pair me with this guy. And again, I didn't know about musical theater. And musical theater is big, so they can reach everyone all the way in the back of the, of the stadium. And I'm more from a realistic, uh, naturalistic kind of acting where you, you, know, you actually talk to the person next to me. So I, I don't know what my line was. My line was, well, hand me the cup. And his line was, well, I will hand you the cup, my dear. The cup will be there to be handed to you. I, I said, oh, OK. <laughs> well, m should I give you the cup back? Oh, yes, you should give it back to me, because you know that is my cup, and it should be given back to me. I didn't get the job. <laughs> but here's the thing. I didn't quit. I didn't fall back. I walked out of there to prepare for the next audition and the next audition and the next audition. I prayed. I prayed. And I prayed. But I continued to fail and fail and fail but it didn't matter because you know what there's an old saying you hang around the barbershop long enough sooner or later you're going to get a haircut so you will catch a break and i did catch a break last year i did a play called fences on broadway someone talked about it won the tony award I, and i didn't have to sing by the way <laughs> But here's the kicker. It was at the court theater. It was at the same theater that I failed that first audition 30 years prior. The, the point is, and I'll pick up the pace, the point is every graduate here today has the training and the talent to succeed. But do you have the guts to fail? Here's my second point about failure. If you don't fail, you're not even trying. I'll say it again. If you don't fail, you're not even trying. My wife told me this great expression. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. Les Brown's a motivational speaker. He made an analogy about this. He says, imagine you're on your deathbed and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. The ghost of the ideas you never acted on. The ghost of the talents you didn't use. And they're standing around your bed, angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they say. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you today, how many ghosts are going to be around your bed when your time comes? You've invested a lot in your education and people have invested in you. And let me tell you, the world needs your talents, man, does it ever. I just got back from Africa like two days ago, so if I'm rambling on, it's because I'm jet lagged. I just got back from South Africa. It's a beautiful country, but there are places there with terrible poverty that need help. And Africa is just the tip of the iceberg. The Middle East needs your help. Japan needs your help. Alabama needs your help. Tennessee needs your help. Louisiana needs your help. Philadelphia needs your help. The world... The world needs a lot and we need it from you. We really do. We need it from you young people. I mean, I'm not speaking for the rest of us up here, but I know I'm getting a little grayer. 
We need it from you, the young people, because remember this. So you got to get out there. You got to give it everything you got, whether it's your time, your, your, your talent, your prayers, or your treasures. Because remember this, you will never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. I'll say it again. You will never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. You can't take it with you. The Egyptians tried it. And all they got was robbed. So the question is, what are you going to do with what you have? I'm not talking about how much you have. Some of you are business majors, some of you are theologians, nurses, sociologists, some of you have money, some of you have patience, some of you have kindness, some of you have love, some of you have the gift of long suffering, whatever it is, whatever your gift is, what are you going to do with what you have? All right, now here's my last point about failure. Sometimes it's the best way to figure out where you're going. Your life will never be a straight path. I began at Fordham University as a pre-med student. I, 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 I took a course called the car, cardiac morphogenesis. I still can't say it. It's ca cardiac, cardiac morphogenesis. I couldn't read it. I couldn't say it. I sure couldn't pass it. <laughs> so then I decided to go into pre-law, then journalism. And with no academic focus, my grades took off in their own direction. Yeah, down. I was a 1.8 GPA one semester, and the university very politely suggested that it might be better to take some time off. I was 20 years old, I was at my lowest point. And then one day, and I remember the exact day, March 27th, 1975, I was helping my mother in her beauty shop. My mother owned a beauty shop up in Mount Vernon. And there's, there was this older woman who was uh, considered one of the elders in the town. And I didn't know her personally, but I, I was looking in the mirror, and every time I looked at the mirror, I could see her behind me, and she was staring at me. She just kept looking at me. Every time I looked at her, she kept giving me these strange looks. So she finally took the dryer off her head and said, to some, she said something I'll never forget. First of all, she said, somebody give me a piece of paper, give me a piece of paper. She said, young boy, I have a prophecy, a spiritual prophecy. She said, you are going to travel the world and speak to millions of people. Now, mind you, I'm 20 years old. I'm flunked out of school. In fact, like a wise ass, I'm thinking to myself, maybe she's got something in that crystal ball about me getting back into school next fall. <laughs> but maybe she was on to something because later that summer, while working as a counselor at a YMCA camp in Connecticut, we put on a talent show for the campers. And after the show, another counselor came up to me and asked, have you ever thought about acting? You're good at that. So when I got back to Fordham that fall, I got in and I changed my major once again for the last time. And in the years that followed, just as that woman prophesied, I have traveled the world and I have spoken to millions of people through my movies. Millions who up till this day couldn't see me, I, who, who up till this day I couldn't see while I was talking to them and they couldn't see me, they could only see the movie. They couldn't see the real me. But I see you today. And I'm encouraged by what I see. And I'm strengthened by what I see. And I love what I see. One more page, and I'll shut up. Let me conclude with this one final point, and actually the president kind of brought it up. It has to do with the movie Philadelphia. She stole my material. <laughs> Many years ago, I did this movie called Philadelphia. We filmed some of the scenes right here on campus. Philadelphia came out in 1993. Most of you are probably still in diapers. Some of the professors, too. But <laughs> <laughs> that cracked me up. <laughs> but it was a good movie. Rent it on, uh, what do you call it, Netflix. It's a good movie. Rent it.
I get 23 cents every time you rent it, please. Rent it. <laughs> Truth. Parents up there, rent, rent, rent it. Netflix, please. Tell your friends too. It's about a man played by Tom Hanks who's fired from his law firm because he has AIDS. He wants to sue the firm, but no one's willing to represent him until a homophobic ambulance chaser, lawyer played by yours truly takes on the case. In a way, if you watch the movie, you'll see everything I'm talking about today. You'll see what I mean about taking risk or being willing to fail. Because taking risk is not just about going for a job. It's also about knowing what you know and what you don't know. It's about being open to people and to ideas. In the course of the film, the character I play begins to take small steps, small risks. He very, very, very slowly begins to overcome his fears. And I feel ultimately his heart becomes flooded with love. And I can't think of a better message as we send you off today. To not only take risks, but to be open to life, to accept new views, and to be open to new opinions. To be willing to speak at a commencement at one of the best, country, best uh, universities in the country, even though you're scared stiff. While it may be frightening, it will also be rewarding. Because the chances you take, the people you meet, the people you love, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. So members of the class of 2011, this is your mission. When you leave the friendly confines of Philly, never be discouraged, never hold back, give everything you got. And when you fall throughout life, and remember this, fall forward. I believe every single one of us has genius within us. I believe every single one of us has this brilliance longing to see the light of the day. I believe every single person on the planet has a mighty mission and is available to a, for a magnificent obsession in their own original way. Now is there an exact formula for this? Well, not exactly, but there are certain principles and disciplines and actions that anybody can do. And when they're combined in the right order, they add up to a success system that never fails. You can use these principles and disciplines to jumpstart your success and help you attract more of what you want in your life. Every day in your life, you gotta weed the negative, and you gotta fertilize the positive. I think a winner is somebody who gets up every single day and fights the fight against doubt fights the fight against fear, fights the fight against laziness and procrastination, and forces themselves to do the work so that they can become a better person, so that they can see their dreams come true, and so that they can astonish themselves. If you're waking up every day and you're not taking steps to be the CEO of your own life and managing your day and running your own life, it's, if you're gonna be an employee, it's gonna run you back, and it will. And there's days I've woken up and gone through the motions and sure as death and taxes something comes up and because I wasn't in the right mindset it took control it ran my day live your best life attack the world enjoy the journey starting now from the day forward be changed and charge it Go out and make it happen every day. Get up and live, learn, love, and laugh. And go out and go for it. Seize your future. Seize your destiny. And live the life you deserve. You win at life when you do the work that makes you feel uncomfortable. We look at winners all the time. We celebrate our greatest heroes in business and in sports because of their outcomes. But the fact is, 
nobody stops and thinks about the fact that those champions, those winners, spent 10, 20, 30 years getting up day in and day out and doing the work. So a winner is somebody that wakes up every morning, pushes themselves out that bed, and does the work to become a better person. You gotta get up early. You gotta make a list. You gotta show up with a great attitude, and you gotta get it done. Getting up in the morning and setting your priorities is very important. If you don't fill your day with high priority things that mean everything to you, that inspire you, your life will fill up with low priority distractions that don't. You gotta give yourself permission to be the most magnificent you you can possibly be. I wonder what would happen if you sat down and actually prioritized your life every day and then went after the most important things and filled your day that way. And every day if you wake up and you don't take control of your day and you don't dominate the day as best you can start to finish, life is going to own you. You know, if you're waking up with a negative attitude, you have to be able to step back and self-assess, why am I in a bad mood? And you have to work from that minute forward to build that tool in your belt, if you will, to be able to assess it, address it, apply it, if you will, and then move forward. If you can do that, life gets exponentially easier and easier and easier every day. And before you know it, you're working with greater efficiency, more confidence, more determination, and you set yourself on a path to truly self-generate success. But more importantly, you're happy. I have a simple exercise I give everybody, and some people say, oh, that's so stupid, it's so silly. But I ask them to look in the mirror especially first thing in the morning, and just look in their eyes and say their name and say, I love you. I really, really love you. And this is enormously hard for most people to do to begin with, but as you continue to do it, it makes a big difference. You see, life loves you. Life really loves you. But if you don't love yourself, it's very hard for life to bring you the goodies because you've got this wall on you. What I do every day, the fact that it makes me mentally stronger, um, the fact that I, I literally push myself to the point of, you know, being physically ill. When you do that, when you're, when you're starting your day at 4.30 in the morning, whatever, do that, the rest of your day, no matter what happens, is a breeze. You've, t you've tackled the hardest part of your day. And no matter what goes on, you have the confidence and, and you have the, the wherewithal, the tool belt, if you will, to be able to attack. Sometimes it's just showing up and being able to push yourself a little bit more than yesterday. If you're not happy today, start acting happy. Act the way you want to feel, and soon you'll feel the way you act. Go out and make it happen in your life. Why not do what you really love every day? I don't mean necessarily the things that are small little things. I'm talking about giving yourself permission to make the difference that you want in life and do the things that are service to others as well as rewarding to you. So we, we live in a world that we want to be as comfortable as we can. And we wonder why we have no growth. We, we wonder why when the smallest thing in our life gets difficult, we wonder why we cower and we run away. Because we are kind of living our, our I mean, our whole life is set up that way. Our whole life is set, set up in, in the path of least resistance. We don't want to suffer. We don't want to feel discomfort. So the whole time we're living our lives in a very comfortable area. There's no growth in that. If you find something that you love to do, then when Monday comes along, you're not going, ah, Monday. You're like, Monday, I get to act. I want you to burn into your nervous system the following statement because it is a fundamental truth of the human condition. It is literally the baseline physics of what it means to be a person. As Earl Nightingale said, we become what we think about. And that's an idea that I want you to hold firmly in your mind. That's something that I really want you to internalize. I really want you to stop right now, whatever you're doing, I want you to stop, lean into this video and listen to what I'm saying. You will become what you think about. 
Really think about that for a second as if it wasn't just a phrase, as if it's more than just words, as if it were a truth about how the brain works, because it is. You're going to become the thing that you think about. And I know that you're dwelling on a lot of negative shit. I know that you're carrying a lot of baggage with you. And I know that as you think about how things might go wrong, that you believe, you believe to the core of your being that you're just planning for the hard times. But the truth is you're going to become those things that you fear. You're going to become the things that you dread. If you're thinking about all the things that you've done wrong in the past, you are going to simply continue that cycle. But if on the other hand, and let this be true, let this ring in your ears with the weight of everything that I carry. If I've ever added an ounce of value to you, if anything I have ever said has seemed remotely true, believe that these are the most important words I'm ever going to say to you. If you begin to focus on positive things, if you begin to focus on your capabilities, if you begin to focus on the potential that you have, if you really dig in, build those skills, drive towards something beautiful, something amazing, something that leaves you in awe that you want to create, that you want to become the vessel for that, then you will. You will become that thing because you will take those steps because you become what you think about. And as Mark Twain said, 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do. So if you don't take those steps, if you don't focus on those things, if you don't manifest what you want to become, if you don't believe in it, if you don't see how real it could be, if you can't picture the version of yourself that you want to become, and even though people have told you that it's not possible for you, that the things you did in the past are never going to allow you to do that, that you're not smart enough, if you let that creep into your mind, then that's what's gonna happen. But if you can see that vision, if you can allow yourself to believe it, then you're going to take the steps that you need to execute against that. And if you go out there and do those things, you won't regret it, but you will regret it if you don't. So get out right now and build the person you wanna be so you can have the life you wanna have. A lot of people always ask themselves, what can I do to be happy? Do everything you can to set up habits and take care of your mind in such a way that you generate more happiness. No matter who you are, what walk of life you're in, number one, you have to own your own happiness. Uh, take it away from other people demanding that they make you happy. Happy, beautiful, people. You've heard it, right? You're, we're to be vibrant people. We're to be happy people. We're to be joyous people. But that doesn't happen by itself. What we have to do is we have to try. And the reason we have to try is because life gets in the way. All of us have within us this amazing capacity to manifest and attract anything that we want into our life. You're a seed. You are full of gifts, talents, potential. But if you plant yourself in unhealthy soil, if you hang around friends that compromise and pull you down, if you're in an environment that's limited with people that tell you what you can't become, you won't see the growth that you should. You are love. You are divine. Put that into your imagination. I am, I am well. I am happy. I am content. I am fulfilled. Even if your senses tell you that you're depressed. I have the power. I have the power to make this happen. I have the power to create this. I have the power to attract this. I have the power to save my relationship. I have the power to build an unstoppable business that serves people all over the world. I have the power to write my next book or my first book. So by placing into your imagination what you want and assuming the feeling of that wish is already fulfilled, you go through your life feeling that. When enough of us do that, we will, we will transform this planet. I'm telling you, it, it can be done. When you know you can, 
you escape the prison of limiting beliefs. When you know you can, you reclaim your power, your joy, and your freedom. As you free yourself from the prison of limiting beliefs by choosing empowering beliefs, you truly can be and do and have whatever you desire. Your personality creates your personal reality. That's it. It's that simple. And your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel. What you think and what you believe is what will come true for you. Your thoughts create your life. It's that simple. And when we can get that, we can make enormous changes. You're not supposed to go around solemn, serious all the time, burdened down by problems, taking time to laugh, to have fun. That re-energizes you. It helps keep you in balance. If it's all work, all stress, all dealing with problems, that's going to weigh you down. You need to start giving the vocabulary of happy to your families. You have to start giving the vocabulary of happy to your teens. But too often, we used to laugh when we were dating. We used to have fun. We used to enjoy each other. But now we've let the pressures of life cause us to become more solid. We don't have time to laugh. We have bills to pay. We have children to raise. We're dealing with problems. We don't see eye to eye on every situation. But the joy is what's going to help you get through the tough times. Laughing together, having fun, that's going to help keep you together. You have a life that's better than 95% of the people on this planet. Most of the people on this planet do not have the luxury that you have right now to watch somebody on a video on YouTube and be able to benefit from that and receive information that could actually improve and better your life. Most people don't have that luxury. Most people do not have a freaking computer and the internet where you can have access to this. Most people don't have the chair, the, 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 the roof that you have over your head right now. Too many of you are sitting around waiting to feel ready. You can still move forward when you're not ready. Too many of you are waiting to feel like you deserve to make six figures. It's about the action. Your mind, your history, your past, you will always have a million excuses not to do it, not to feel like it, not to believe in yourself. You are a master creator, constantly creating your life in exact accord with your thoughts and feelings. You are an external being worthy of anything and everything you desire. If you wanted to create a new personal reality, that on a fundamental level you would have to change the thoughts that you are thinking, the behaviors and habits that you're demonstrating, and the emotions that you've memorized that's become part of your identity. And most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality and it never works. We have to become somebody else. Did you live your life? Not someone else's life, not the parent's life, not your spouse's life, not your team's life, not your obligation's life. Did you live your life? Because you got one shot at it, so did you show up and do well? Friends, don't let one disappointment, one loss, one bad break cause you to settle. We all go through things we don't understand. Life doesn't always make sense. The key is you have to pass through the place of your greatest pain. If you get knocked down, bounce up. If somebody next to you gets knocked down, help them up. Look inside yourself and find that desire. Go win big. And because we're always looking back, reliving the negative, we end up carrying around all this baggage that weighs us down. One of the best things we can learn to do is drop it, let it go. The best part of your life is right up in front of you. It's a beautiful day while you're singing, nothing matters to you. 
this life is all And the words are gone Beautiful day when you're singing Nothing matters to you This life is all And the words are gone You have within you what it'll take for you to go do something great in your life. But you got to get yourself in a positive cocoon where you make some fundamental decisions in your life. You're a force of nature. You're somebody great. You were put on this earth to make a difference. And I'm telling you that the way that you were made, the way that you are now is beautiful or handsome and that you're enough and that once you can finally acknowledge the fact that you're enough, that you're beautiful and gifted and special and made in the image of this higher place, right? That once you can acknowledge that, you're gonna be very, very happy. All your confidence, all your happiness, all the things you want to achieve in your life come from when you understand that you are made perfect the way you are. It doesn't mean we don't want to improve things in our life and chase the next version of us and all that, but the you that exists now is enough. And that you have everything within you right now to make your dreams happen, to be happy. Seize the moment. It, it, enjoy the moment. Minister in the moment. Do it now. D don't, don't somehow think that tomorrow is going to, to be the time when you go. All people are passing by, it's a great day Nobody even cares that I've got this smile on my side I talk to myself, is it true that we all must cry? Cause a great day, you shouldn't even care Cause you have this smile on your side It's a beautiful day when you're singing Nothing matters to you the smile is on, and the words are gone. Beautiful day when you're singing, nothing matters to you. The smile is on, and the words are gone. First thing in the morning and last thing in the evening, I want you to look into your eyes and say, I love you. I really love you and I accept you exactly as you are. It can be tough at first, but if you stick with it, in a short time, this affirmation will be true for you. We even have to remove at some point, sometimes, our own stupid thoughts, our own bad actions, our own poor habits. And we have to start with the fact that, whether you call it the universe, luck, chance, God, evolution, spirit, Whatever you call it, you've been blessed with breath. That you are alive right now, the odds of that is so extraordinarily rare that I really believe loving ourselves starts from a place of reverence for life. This is a good day. This is a new beginning.